Sorry, I did not mean to press live. I was typing in the title and, and I said live. Anyway, so welcome to Glove Cooking with Lindsay, where I'm sharing dishes designed to transform you um, physically, mentally, emotionally from within so you can live an empowered um, life, <laughs> purposeful life. So we are working with uncomfortable produce because this is a series where we're building our champion and it's rocky because we cannot work on working towards our goals, conquering dreams when we have doubts. So there are lots of things in the kitchen that we can work to overcome that doubt because we can build self-confidence, which is great because we have to cook anyway. So that is why we're working with uncomfortable produce vegetables. We, we're working with the pumpkin pie, working the spaghetti squash, and now we're working my one of my favorite fruits and that is the pomegranate pomegranate is only available now for like a couple of months and it's a little comfortable because we're not used to it i don't think i even like use this until i was in my early 30s i'm not sure if i just didn't see it then but um i love it i take the arrows the seeds and i freeze them so anyway so we're i'm going to show you how I get the little seeds, the little gems that are so beautiful and stuff that you can totally top on anything. And anyway, so anyway, so so you take your pomegranate, it's like it looks like this. <laughs> and honestly, like as far as like how to look for the pomegranate, it's in season right now. It's only in season for like a month or two, so you can't go wrong. Okay, so you cut it in half and you see these beautiful halves. So this is what we want. We want these arrows. Arils, A R I L S, seeds, whatever you want to say, and we want them. So, the way I do it, some people have different mechanisms to do it. I like this way because I don't know, it takes out some aggression. So, I take the pomegranate, turn it face side down, my palm, my, my fingers are spread out wide. I take the wooden spoon and I hit it, and you can start seeing. Let me get this. Let me kind of get it so you guys can see it because this is like our major live portion because everything else is going to go really fast. Okay, so we have this down. Just start beating it and as you can see, all the seeds are falling down. And you just kind of rip it. Always great to crush it down in the kitchen, right? I definitely have some. So this helps. Okay, so with these seeds, arrows, whatever, um, I always get a whole batch of pomegranates when they're seasoned because they're only seasoned for like a month or two. So I'll take them. I have a whole batch I saw frozen from last year because they have this lovely, sweet, tart flavor. And yes, they're great nutrients, vitamin C and everything like that, but like they just add some sort of pop to your dishes. They add, I mean, look at how beautiful they are. They add a little, I call them gems. They have that beautiful look to your dishes. Um, all right, so look how many you get from just one half. So what's going to happen is you start, you have all your seeds. Sometimes you have like these white bits in the middles. Just like break them out, okay? Now, you can totally take these seeds, these aerials, Top them off anything again, the natural sweet tart flavor, plus they add a natural juiciness. They don't taste good, and like whatever topping you want to, you can freeze them for like a whole year, as I've like proven. Or, um, I have in the book, I made this pomegranate glaze. Um, last week I shared this pomegranate molasses, which is like already made. You can buy pomegranate molasses totally amazing all it is is pomegranates so great so you can use that it's a nice like um it can add a nice like flavor this pomegranate glaze that i add is a little bit thicker you only need a little bit oh my gosh i can add my like dish towel you only need a little bit i'll show you um picture in the book because i'm very proud of it so in the book i do have it like featured it's right here so it's this nice like condiment that is very bold, beautiful, and actually I do think it would be great. I'm already thinking about Thanksgiving. So we are going to make this pomegranate glaze. I'm going to show you how to make it, the, the pre-makings of it easily. 
and then we're gonna turn it into this uh, mac and cheese. Oh my goodness, yeah. And uh, I kind of just like made this all like before. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking lately. All right, so I'm gonna show you how, this pomegranate glaze is a little bit of a step. Okay, so you have your aerials. So what you're gonna do with these, and you could do this, now you can buy some pomegranate juice and do the same thing. So we're gonna add these pomegranate aerials to a juicer, not a juicer, I'm sorry, to my blender, which every time you use your blender, you wanna make sure the blades are covered. It's a little bit um, not covered, but anyway, this is just one half. I'm just trying to go through this. And I'm just gonna blend this, basically. And of course, it's not going to blend all the way because it's not the blends are the blades are covered. So we are going to go ahead, and I guess I'm, I'll just go ahead and uh, hit this other one just to show you because the whole dish I have today is really fast. I already made the closet. Okay, so that has to pull by the sea, has a lot of fiber. It does have like some in the carbs again um we don't like when it comes to like natural carbs it's not the same as bigger carbs okay so anyway i'm not gonna show you the whole process of um this pomegranate glaze but this is like i'm gonna blend this right Up, which is basically, I mean, you could probably just this like pomegranate juice that you buy from the store, and then what I do is I already have this. <laughs> no, it's a contraption. <laughs> it's a huge thing. I have my handheld strainer, and then what I do is I pour it in there, and what happens is I have the juice. Then I put it in. I let it strain. It takes a while. I will press down on with it like a spoon or a fork. To like help it like move down um it's one of those things where like at first you're like oh this is a process and you learn it but honestly this is like so worth it to have this condiment on especially um well any table i love it but thanksgiving day table i haven't eaten turkey in years but i do remember what it tastes like and i just think this pomegranate glaze would be amazing on it again that's smart uh not smart <laughs> that sweet and tart and kind of paste would be amazing and it's good for you. So what happens is you strain this and it becomes a juice and then you put it on your little stove top and you just kind of let it reduce till it thickens. You could probably do some pomegranate glaze too. But anyway, I don't know why I was like, I gotta show this pomegranate glaze. This is before all this pomegranate bliss happened. It's what happens when you make a cookbook years in the making before it's time and it just takes forever to come out you think of things before and then it kind of gets frustrating when it takes so long to happen but anyway that's okay that's okay i'm not bitter at all okay so anyway so what happens is it's gonna like it's gonna drain we're gonna put it on the, the stove and it's gonna reduce down and then they get this lovely pomegranate glaze so Again, you can still use those pomegranate seeds to just top on whatever you want. Still amazing. For some reason, though, I was just like, I need to like try something different because I got all this spaghetti gosh from last week. So let's make a dish. Let's make something different. Okay, we're gonna hop on what we made the last two weeks. So we got all the spaghetti squash, or at least I do, and we are going to make something with it. So where is my bowl? Okay, yeah, this is, uh, huh, one second. I'm going to get a bowl. Oh, I don't know why, why that happened. So we're gonna take some of the spaghetti squash we made last week. Um, and then we're going to add this to this bowl. All right, now we're going to add one egg. Oh, my hair. One egg. This is going to help like do the binding. 
So this is, what we're making is, probably it's not a vegan dish, it's a vegetarian dish. Okay, hold on for one second, sorry. Okay. And then we're going to mix it. And what we're going to be making now, <laughs> what I hope we're making now, no, I think it's going to be, what I plan on making now, is we're making this, um, we're going to take the summer squash, or not summer squash, the spaghetti squash we made last week, we're going to make the pumpkin mash we made the week before, and we're going to add them together, and we are going to be making this pumpkin mac and cheese spaghetti squash pie, which we're going to glaze with the Excuse me, pomegranate glaze. Okay, so it's already kind of mixing in. Okay, just to add the extra crust appeal, we're gonna add some almond flour. Hmm, hopefully, I have a. Uh... Oh, good. I never know how I twirl my thing out. So we're gonna add a couple. This is just a couple tablespoons of almond flour. And this is okay. And you mix this together, and what this is going to do is just form a nice, like, kind of base crust, which is cool because this is not normal. <laughs> so, just make sure you mix this all together. I made this this past weekend with, um, I don't know, this like egg batter, and then I thought, oh. I'm gonna try this again with this pumpkin mash. Okay, so anyway, all right. So what we have now is this just casserole dish. It's just um, like a bread pan size. All right, I love these kind of casserole dishes. I was contemplating on whether to do this on a spring, spring, spring form plant pan, spring form pan. Okay, so what we do is we're gonna form the whole bottom. These do like have great reactive heat to these things. Okay, so we'll just put this on the bottom. We just wanna make sure we cover the bottom. What this forms is like this crazy crust, which you wouldn't think, right? Because who would think that a spaghetti squash could be used this way? So it's really cool. Okay. Oh, All right. So like kind of even out the edges. I'm just gonna take another spoon because I just wanted to form it to make it really smooth on the sides. Sorry, that's like really loud. Okay. Okay. That's nice. <laughs> All right. So we got our bottom. All right, so now we are going to make, which I already did, I don't know, I, I was gonna like kind of blend it, but I get um, really exhausted with the blender. Um, so I made this pumpkin cheese sauce already out of the pumpkin mash we made a couple weeks ago. Because I'm sorry, I, you know, I kind of build on what we made. So it's just a, a real pumpkin with some coconut milk, some nutritional yeast, some spices, some tahini, and I'm gonna add it with some chickpea returning. So chickpea, you can you can add any kind of chickpea pasta, or I mean, I guess you could add regular pasta, but we're doing um, plant-based, gluten-free um, eating here. So this is um, chickpea pasta, which you buy in a box. You only have to cook it for like three minutes. It's so, so, so fast. So we're gonna add this um, sauce to this. Um, I did add a little bit of broccoli to the one I have in the oven, um, just seeing how that turns out. Now the thing is, when you do want to add sauce to any of these kind of pastas, they're just really delicate, so make sure you use a spatula, so you just kind of like fold it in. You really don't want to mix it. This kind of pasta doesn't have as much resilience as like regular like pasta, which you know, has a lot of like gluten and everything. And so just make sure that's like all covered. I am gonna add an egg to this. I wasn't sure because I had this like picture in mind before tonight and I was like, I had everything together in my head. I was like, 
this is how I'm gonna make it. Yeah, and then I started thinking, oh my god, is it gonna stick together? Because I, I totally um did not put this dish together before the live. Um, and sometimes that happens, but um, but it's I mean when I had my meal service, I actually every every week I had my meal service. I did dishes that I never did before, but this is kind of different because it's like an assembly and everything like that. Okay, so anyway, so I'm gonna add a an egg an egg to properly combine it so that it does stick together. Um, a lot of times you'll see with um, vegan cheese sauces, they will just add like the vegan shredded cheese. I'm not for that because it has preservatives. I'm not against cheese. I do eat it now when it comes from the Amish because they know exactly what they're doing because it's preservative free, it's healthy for you and anything like that. Okay, so we're mixing it together. It's all combined. I could probably use some more pasta, but I don't have it. And then we're just going to push it on, or push it on top. We're going to spread it on top. It's good to use some more. Okay. And then we are going to, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to top it. Remember those coconut chips you made? Like episode one, they would be amazing on this. But first, actually, I'll just go ahead and do that now because I'm going to this. Yeah, so remember those coconut chips we did for those deviled eggs? Those would also be so brilliant on these. So we are going to, I know, I still have them in my freezer. And then we're just going to top it with that because it's a nice crispy layer that is going to be beautiful. So we are going to put this in the oven at 350 and <laughs> see, because I did make one earlier, see how it turned out. Let's clear this out. Please? Oh, shoot. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you ever have like a hard day, it's like, God, I still need to do this thing. But I'm like, but it's okay. Um, but I, I got my white plate. Sorry, I got to clear this off. You know how I do, if you do watch the channel, you know that I have to like, before I top everything, I need to like clear everything off. Alright, so, and then my hair always gets in the way. <laughs> Alright, so I have the other one I made ready. Um, let's get it. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, right, Lindsay? Okay. Okay, and here it is. The final product. Isn't it beautiful? Okay. And so what's great about this, first of all, these dishes, like, this is like a, um, you know, you can put them on, this, this, this is, uh, you can make them and it's, you know, to, to the table, <laughs> you make it, post it in the oven and then put it to the table and it's so beautiful. Everybody loves these. These, I'm not really sure like what these are like called but they're very like small. I would have done something bigger, but again, I had to do something for the end. you're probably wondering, where the hell is the pomegranate glaze? <laughs> I know, and actually, now that I did this plate, I'm gonna change it real quick because I'm not gonna see the pomegranate glaze like I want to. So I'm gonna just, is because I didn't want to just pump pomegranate seeds on something and show you another salad. I just thought that was really boring and I wanted to like build on everything that we already did. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna spoon out this luxurious pumpkin mac and cheese spaghetti squash thing, a pie, soiree, whatever you want to call it, which is perfect, definitely perfect for it. Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> and I'm like, it's, okay, this is the first time. Okay, so I'm using my fish turner, which if you guys do not own one of these, you guys should. It's nice and thin. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay. All right, it's going through. All right, sorry, like, again. First time I ever made this. 
theme. I think it's coming out great. Oh gosh, okay. Just make sure you get the ends. <laughs> I'm gonna make something like this. Oh, oh yeah. Look at me go. Oh, it looks so good. It came out great. First time. Okay. Okay, so here she is. Well, here she is. Okay. But the pomegranate glaze comes at the end because the pomegranate glaze is the bling. And we just want a little bit. Because um, you see how long it took us to make just a little bit. So we want to make sure we just kind of glaze it a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to use this beautiful die got me. So. And what we're gonna do is just now, we're gonna go right on top. Um, okay, see how thick it is? That's exactly what you want though. Oh, yes. Just kind of dab it on there and that beautiful pinkish reddish color, which is a little bit darker than the dress I'm making. Okay, I'm not sure why I'm activating that. Okay. Yeah, and I don't really have any other herbs to do it. Um, yeah, okay. I don't have any, er I don't have any herbs to like kind of decorate more. I just had, did not have to decorate. But anyway, so this is it. I think it looks so awesome. It turned out so good, right? This spaghetti squash and almond crust with this uh, chickpea pasta with this pumpkin pumpkin mac and cheese the coconut which added this crispiness and now we have this pomegranate glaze I mean this looks beautiful and of course it's totally excuse me totally nutritious and I'm really excited about it <laughs> I think it turned out great what do you guys think do you guys think it turned out great I think so too Usually I have an herb to decorate it with, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. What do you guys think? Okay, please show you, share me with your likes. I am posting these all on, I'm starting a YouTube now. They're just gonna have all of my, these Facebook Lives on them. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. Next week we're gonna finish up this series and then after that we're gonna have a special Halloween episode. Can't wait. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Bye.